the Porsche Cup, Road Atlanta and iRacing. Just mentioning those three things in the same sentence sends shivers down my spine. I'm not going to lie, this combo terrifies me. And do you know what scares me the most? Turn two. You're hard on the brakes going over the crest of a hill. You're having to reposition the car while you're braking. And if that isn't enough, it's a blind apex too. On lap one, there's every chance we'll be going in there two or even three wide on cold tyres in cars that are notoriously among the most difficult to control in iRacing. Now, do you see why I'm bricking it? The only thing I can do is qualify as far forward as I can and then hope for the best. Well, I've achieved the first part. A decent qualifying time of 121.5 has put me third on the grid, just two tenths behind the pole position man, Brendan Cherry. Will it be enough to survive this ultra-challenging combo, though? Let's get on track and find out. Green flag, green flag. Well, I've made a good enough start, but Jorge Barelli behind him fifth has made an absolutely cracking one. It's already alongside me to the left, so I'm going to try and stay as tight as possible into the first corner. There's Barelli up into second position, but he's run it in a little bit too hot into turn one. That allows us to pull alongside, and now my worst fears have been realised. We're headed into T2, three wide. We've got to keep it really tight on the inside, leave the other space, and we've managed it. Oh, that was a nervy moment. Not only did we have Borelli on the outside of us, we had Fabian Jean there too. We were three wide going into that turn. I was on the inside, so it was imperative that I held my line. The last thing I wanted to do was drift in to the path of the other two drivers. That would have caused absolute mayhem. I did see some traffic codes flying in the rearview mirror, so someone must have run wide. I suspect it might have been Borelli because he's dropped down to fifth position. And for all my pre-race worrying, we've actually come out of that quite well. We're up to second place. That doesn't happen very often on CR Sim Racing. Normally, we go backwards at the start, but today, we've gained a position. It's early days, though, and we're being harassed by Fabian Jean behind. He's picked up a bit of a toe down this long straight. He's moved out to the left, so he's going to challenge up the inside into this final chicane. Now, the last thing I want to do is get into a battle of the brakes while they're still warming up. We're going to give him the space if he wants to make the pass, but he decides against it, and he actually gives us a little tap on exit there. So that's the first four X of the race. I was just a little worried about going into that chicane too wide, so I left as much room as I could, but it compromised not only my line, but my exit speed too. That's probably what brought Gene out and caused him to run into the back of me, but no harm done. However, there might be some harm here as we run it in a bit too hot into T1. That's going to cost us some speed. And it's invited Gene to dive up the inside into turn two. There's nothing we can do about that. We couldn't defend it. We didn't want any contact. So we've had to surrender second position. And that was all down to my mistake into T1. I just couldn't get the car stopped and turn quick enough. Had we made the apex, we probably could have defended the position. As it is, we're down to third. And do you know who's rubbing his hands with glee at all of this? It's the leader, Brendan Cherry. He is clearing off. He's got a lead of around two seconds now over Gene. We're in third. Look in the rearview mirror. Jake White in fourth is going to lose it on the exit of the corner. And the rear steps out. And that causes all the cars behind him to break. That is going to give us some much needed breathing room. What a relief. So we'll take this opportunity to check out a replay from lap one. Now watch Jorge Borelli starting in fifth behind me in the black Porsche. He's already alongside me. That was an absolutely fantastic start from Borelli, but he just ran it in a bit too hot into T1. Look at him trying his hardest to keep it off the grass, but that invites me up the inside and also Fabian Jean too. At this point, I'm terrified. We're approaching T2. I'm holding as tight a line as I can. And then, yeah, we see the traffic coach flying in the background and it was from Borelli. I think he got a nudge from Gene. Yeah, there's the contact that sends Borelli out a little bit wide. Thankfully, though, we were in front of it by that point and stayed out of trouble. But by the end of the lap, we were facing a big challenge down the hill from Fabian Jean. He has a look up the inside into the chicane, and I left as much space for him as I could. However, he did decide against it, but on exit, he just got a little bit too close and gave me a tap. Then at the start of lap two, into T1, I just run it in a little bit too hot. And I'm panicking at this point because I think I'm going to clip the grass. If I do, it's game over. Thankfully, I didn't. But it does invite Gene to make a move up the inside. And I've got no choice but to surrender that position. And just behind me, you can see the number 11, Jake White, closing in fast. But White was going to make a mistake of his own at the back part of the circuit. Just carrying a bit too much speed through this corner. The rear steps out. He has to get on the brakes and save it. And that causes all the other cars to slow down too. 
returning to the live action towards the end of lap three and you can see just how big an advantage I gained from White Slide. The rest of the drivers are now more than three seconds back so we're occupying third position at the moment in a hot pursuit of Fabian Jean in second. Now Jean's 1.1 seconds ahead at the moment and the leader Brandon Cherry, he's three seconds clear. But once again, we're going to get it wrong coming into T1. I just can't turn the car. This time we are going to get out on the grass. And now it's a battle to save it. We don't want that rear to step out. Thankfully, we keep it facing in the right direction and get it back on track. But that was a real heart-in-mouth moment. It's not very often you take one of these Porsches onto the grass and survive it. And boy, am I grateful for that gap behind because we've managed to hold on to third position just yeah, it was the same mistake that I made a couple of laps earlier. That time I managed to keep it off the grass. This time I couldn't. There's the lockup. And look at us on the grass. That rear is desperate to step out. Somehow we managed to hold on to it and keep it going. But that near four second gap to the cars behind completely disappeared. They're now within one second, although we did lose Jake White, the number 11. Back to the live action, we're just starting lap 6 and I'm going to be taking turn 1 a lot more cautiously from now on. I don't want a repeat of that mistake that cost us so much time. As it is, we've managed to hold on to third position, but we're almost 6 seconds behind Fabian Jean in second. Let's switch on Jean's cockpit cam, because I want to see just how close he is to the leader, Brendan Cherry. My only hope of catching these two guys now is if they start battling with each other and slow each other down. At the moment, it doesn't look like that's going to happen, because there's about a second or a second and a half separating them. It does look like Jean might just be a little bit quicker than the leader, Cherry, but that is going to be a tall order to close down that gap. They're approaching that sharp right-hander, and it looks like Cherry might have made a mistake because that gap has visibly reduced. Now, Jean is right on the rear end of that green Porsche. Cherry got all out of shape on exit of that corner, and that is going to cost him big time. And what is the longest and fastest straight on the track? Gene is carrying a lot more speed, and he's going to strike now. He moves to the outside. Cherry's defending on the inside, but Gene's got the pace. He's going to make it to the chicane first, and we've got a new race leader. Fabian Gene out in front, Brendan Cherry down to second, and has that helped us at all? Are we any closer to them? Well, it doesn't look like we are, sadly. That gap to Cherry in second, five and a half seconds. All we can do now is hope that they continue to fight with each other and continue to slow each other down. Well, Cherry actually made two mistakes on that sixth lap, which allowed Jean to close in on him. This was the first one, just clipping the dust at T1. No real harm done there, but it certainly cost him a couple of tenths. However, this mistake, as the rear steps out, is going to cost him big time. That's all his momentum lost for that long straight, and Jean takes full advantage. He pulls out alongside Cherry, and although Cherry's got the defensive line, Jean is carrying so much extra speed down that hill. He's made the pass even before they reach the chicane. So Fabian Jean is our new race leader. Well, at seven, and we failed to gain any ground on the two drivers in front. Jean has opened up a bit of a lead now, so those two guys are no longer battling. And we're six seconds behind, but cast your eye to the bottom of the hill. That is Brandon Cherry in the gravel. Got on the, uh, the big question is how quickly can he rejoin? Not very quickly by the look of it because we are right on his tail now. So that five second advantage that Cherry had has been completely wiped out after that mistake at the bottom of the hill. Now we know that Cherry's going to have dirty tyres after that off track. That's going to affect his grip. And we also know that he's liable to a mistake when put under pressure. We saw it when Fabian Jean closed in on him. So we've got a really big opportunity to compete for second position again. It's vital that we stay right on his tail. We want to be breathing down his neck through these S's. It looks like he's quick through there. He's got a little bit of a jump on us and gained the tenth or two. He's flying through this section, but then gets a little bit out of shape. He clouds the curb on the right-hand side. That's going to send him wide. This is our opportunity. We've got to watch for the rejoin and swerve over to the left just in time to give him enough space to rejoin, but we've got in front of him. We're up to second position. Now it's absolutely essential that we hit our apexes on both of these corners. We can throw it all away in an instant if we mess up these turns. We haven't done. We can burst out of the corner and we're up to second position. This is Cherry's mistake at the end of the seventh lap. You can see how hard he's trying to close in on the race leader, but he just outbreaks himself. That puts him into the gravel and his five second advantage over me is wiped out in an instant. 
And by the time we get to this downhill slalom through the S's, we're putting him under all kinds of pressure. That forces him into a mistake at this turn. He runs a little bit wide. We have to take avoided action as he rejoins, but we've got the pace to get in front of him and take the position. We're up to second. Jerry down to third. Rejoining the live action a couple of laps later. Lap number 10, and we've been unable to clear off. Cherry is still hanging on in there. He's less than a second behind, but he's going to lock up into the chicane, and that is going to give us a welcome boost. As we come up over the brow of the hill, the advantage now is double with two seconds clear of Cherry, and finally, we've got a bit of breathing room as we start lap 11. Yeah, much like when he was chasing Gene a few laps earlier, he just breaks a bit too late, locks up there, keeps it out of the gravel this time, but it's cost him one second. The very same corner, one lap later, we've still got that two second advantage over Cherry, but he's going to make another big mistake, and this one's going to be more costly. Watch him in the rearview mirror as we come up over the brow of the hill. He's disappeared. He hasn't made it over the top of the hill, so something big must have happened. Look at the relative board. That gap is now more than four seconds. Yeah, we couldn't see in the rearview mirror what caused Cherry to drop so far back so suddenly, but the replay will tell all. He loses the rear going up the hill. That sends him into the wall, and I'm guessing he's picked up some damage. Riding on board with Cherry now. This will show us exactly how these cars can punish the smallest of mistakes. The rear just steps out, and then it's gone. It sends him into the wall, and that's his race over. Yeah, that mistake from Cherry all but guaranteed me second position. I knew I wasn't going to catch the leader, Gene, so I just concentrated on these final few laps to make sure I kept it safe and steady to bring it home and take an unlikely podium. I never thought I'd get a podium at the start of this race. I was more concerned about survival. Um, while we've had a healthy I rating game there, a plus 73, it was inevitable that we were going to lose a bit of safety rating after that first lap contact and also a few off tracks. We'll take a look at the other incidents in the race shortly, but before that, let's check out the classified results and I'm happy to say there we are in second position. My fastest lap, not quite on the pace of the race winner Fabian Jean, but it compares favourably to most others on the grid. So all in all, a job well done at Road Atlanta today. So what went down on track behind us? Was there the carnage that I was so afraid of before the race? Well, actually, it took until the end of the first lap for there to even be an instant. The number 16, Hector Manuel, getting violently shoved off into the wall by the number 10, Nicholas Brown. Then the next lap, the number 12, Brown Christensen, crashing out spectacularly at high speed down the start and finish straight. A couple of laps later, we're going to see a carbon copy of that first lap instant. There's another big nudge, but the number seven, Daniel Samperitz, manages to hold on to it. Oh, this is going to be a turn one, and this is going to be a sharp reminder of how lucky I was to get away with it. That's exactly the mistake I made, but we managed to save it. The number two, Emil VDW, wasn't so lucky. Speaking of not so lucky, the number seven, Daniel Semperitz. We saw him save it earlier, but he wasn't able to save that one. And here's Nicholas Grant getting it wrong into T2. Actually, I'm surprised more people didn't lose it in there. That was the corner I was really worried about. Here's another example. Just saw Emil clip the grass on the way up the hill then, and that forces the rear to step out. Oh, and here's the unlucky Brandon Cherry careering into the bridge at the top of the hill. That was what virtually guaranteed us second position. And then finally, the number 15, Sam Brustine, getting it wrong at turn seven, losing the rear. Easily done, that spin. So yeah, what on earth was I worried about? I feared the worst coming into this one, and actually, it's the cleanest Porsche Cup race I've ever had in iRacing. Incredible stuff. However, if you're still thirsty for some Road Atlanta carnage, I'd recommend you check out the Formula 4 race that I did here last season. The link to the video is on screen now. There's disaster after disaster after disaster. You've got to check it out. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the grid soon for the next one. Cheers.